are you, Ben? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to see you again. Um, you as well. Yeah. For, for, for those just tuning in, uh, Matt was featured on our cover at Backstage a few months back, and I had the pleasure of sitting with him for that. Um, yeah. And thank you so much for making the time to chat with us today. Thank um, you all so much. Yeah, of course. Of course. So, uh, the season three finale of The Center was last night on USA Network. Um, I really loved watching along this season, and you, of course, were so excellent on it. Um, oh, thank you. And I, I feel like, obviously, we're living in pretty extraordinary times right now, and what, what some people want is just a good TV show, so <laughs> you certainly provided that. Well, my um, goodness, if it gave anyone just an hour of escape, then I'm, I'm very thankful for right, that. Right, that's, that's what we're here for. Um, yeah. But, but how, how's it feel now that, I mean, I feel like this was such a big part of your life for a while. It's all out in the world. Yeah, I mean, honestly, at this point in time, just with everything going on, I'm <clears throat> even doing something like this feels almost indulgent. I just, I'm so grateful that people stayed with the story and, and stayed with the journey these characters were on over the course of the season and, and stuck it out with all of us. Um, so I guess I just feel really grateful right now yeah, to sure. everyone who, who committed to, to going on this ride this season. And, and it certainly is uh, a, 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 an excellent turn from you, of course, but Jamie is a pretty dark character. It's a grueling, devoted performance. Um, what was it like for you to kind of tap into that and make it all come to life? Well, I was getting to work with wonderful creatives all around me, which always makes it a lot easier, even when it's darker material. But it was, you know, it was a story that asked a lot of the audience. It asked a lot of all the actors involved in telling the story uh, in a good way. Um, I would say the more challenging aspects were keeping the character grounded in a sense of, of real humanity and truth um, and, and keeping Jamie someone who could do anything at any given moment. Um, and, and, and making sure his unpredictability and his sense of danger was something that came from a really organic and, and true place and wasn't just, you know, twirling a mustache or, or you know, uh, contrived in any way, you know. Yeah, I mean, he, he's definitely um, a complex character, just in the sense that he has that kind of magnetism to him. And you can tell, especially in the earlier episodes, that he means well that his heart is in the right place at least for the first half of the series yeah um, so, so what what was that like for you to kind of negotiate the fact that you might be sympathizing with someone <laughs> who is performing these atrocities well um i think as an actor you're always your character's defense attorney you know uh i could never come at him from a place of judgment, because I figured once I did that, it was kind of over for me. It would, it would lose all its appeal. Um, the challenging aspect was knowing everything that he was feeling and everything that he was holding down and, and subjugating within himself um, and having that inside him even in the earlier episodes, even though I couldn't really reveal it all to the audience. It was sort of like playing a game of poker, both with Ambrose and Leela, but also with the audience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I tried to always come at it in terms of, of, of human behavior and, and his truth and what he was going through and what his sense of convictions were in terms of his, his morals and philosophies. I always think of him, you know, if you think about like, there is a, a certain magnetism about people when they are so committed to uh, certain philosophies. Even if you look at somebody like Manson, um, mm -hmm. you know, there, there is a certain magnetism about these people and the egos involved. And I think that's sort of who Nick was to Jamie. The tricky thing about Jamie is that he's trying to take, he's having this romance with this philosophy, but he really doesn't have the emotional life. And he certainly doesn't have the spiritual life to be able to, uh, uh, bolster himself when his life starts to fall apart. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm glad that you mentioned Nick, because there is that whole um, line between Harry and Jamie in the final episode, where Jamie feels like he's taking on the role that Nick played in his life for Harry. Um, and yeah. why, why do you think that characters like Harry, characters like Sonia, um, I was especially fascinated that they were so drawn to Jamie, despite the fact that he's 
a dangerous guy. <laughs> so, so what did you make of that? Well, those are a couple of different questions. I can't really speak for their characters or, or, or the actors who played mm, those sure. characters. But um, I think certainly from knowing Ambrose and getting to know Sonia over the course of the season, we, we've seen that they're people who tend to think outside the box. So they could understand or maybe see a little bit of themselves in somebody who also was calling into question a society where we're all glued to our cell phones and not really connecting with each other. Um, but in terms of Jamie, uh, what, so what was the other question you asked uh, I, before I that? Said, I I'd said how Jamie takes on the role in Harry's life that Nick played in Jamie's oh. life. Yeah, exactly. You can't really have a shepherd without a flock. Mm -hmm. You know, you need, it's, it's a road you, you want to go down with somebody else. And I think <clears throat> uh, when Jamie realized he lost that in Nick, he sees Ambrose as somebody who he can reinstate that relationship with and have somebody to push himself to the edge with. Yeah, yeah. To, to uh, dire consequences, to say the least. Um, I, I had said before uh, you joined us, Matt, that we, we are going to get into a bit of spoiler territory. So for those who haven't watched the season finale, um, which was last night, be sure to catch up on it, but also spoiler alert. Um, I did want to ask you specifically about that last standoff between Jamie and Harry, um, <sighs> just because aside from the emotional capacity needed for that scene, there's fight choreography, there's violence. Like, h How do you go about approaching something like that with a co-star like Bill Pullman? Well, you're so grateful you have someone like Bill who's such a professional and is going to be as dedicated and committed to it as you hope that you are as an actor. Um, you know, it was it was strung out over the course of a few days between all the physical violence and then, you know, the subsequent kind of standoff and mm. ending. Um, but I remember there were scenes where Bill and I, it was two o'clock in the morning. It was freezing cold. Neither of us were dressed for the cold. And we were just sitting there beating, beating each other, <laughs> beating on each other for hours on end. Yeah. But there was an amazing thing that happened. Um, and, and Bill was just fantastic to have as a partner because I knew he was going to be right there for me um, wherever it went. Um, but also having Derek Simons, the creator, who's a wonderful artist, to have him directing that episode he was so invested in the characters and mm. particularly in uh, Jamie's last scene. Um, uh, we had this experience. We have a, a wonderful crew on the show who are, are lovely people. I love working with them. Um, but it was the last thing we filmed really. And, and he just called everyone to order on set and just said, let's give this scene the respect and um, the gravity it needs and that the performers need and let's really bolster Matt in this moment. And I've never had a director like ask for everybody's support on a difficult scene, but I felt it and it really, um, I don't know, it just freed me up to go places that were outside of my head or anything I'd preconceived for mm -hmm. the moment, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it paid off uh, twofold to say the least. I haven't seen it. Our cable went out yesterday. I heard, I heard. <laughs> so I will be watching it, I promise. But, yeah, so um, yeah. Well, I well, haven't you, seen it. You can take my word and everyone watching, it paid off. <laughs> oh, that's so good to hear. Um, now, we, we are getting a few audience questions in and just in terms of Jamie, um, <laughs> Instagram user Mariana Saranga is curious to know what your prep is like when you're preparing for a role like Jamie. Um, I know that we talked about that in our cover story, but can you give us a give us an overview on how you actually found your way in? Yeah, um, this this one was really unique because as we'd spoken about when we when we talked a few months ago, we did this workshop where we incorporated our dreams and our subconscious into the work, which was a first for me. And I know that seems really kind of esoteric and numinous, but it really does get the material under your skin and, and gets you out of your head in a really great way. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that work with Kim Gillingham, who is phenomenal. And then I always have the incredible Larry Moss as a resource in New York and Nancy Banks in LA, um, who I could always check in with on certain scenes. And um, it was a lot of work. It was really immersive. And then I tried to just make, make sure I, I carved out you know, 
a couple hours when I was home or an hour, sometimes not even that because the turnaround would be so quick, but just to kind of shake it off and go on a walk and be myself for a while before having to dive into the next day's material. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not like we were walking, I was walking around um, in a cloud the whole time, but you, you did just because of the nature of, of television and how fast it moves, you did kind of want to come to set in the space of where you needed to be in the scene. Yeah, yeah. We, we do have a question here from Instagram user, unapo unapologetic realist. Um, yes. I the Instagram handle. <laughs> um, did it mess with your psyche preparing and playing such a dark role? And it sounds like it was important for you to have that time to shake it off. Yeah, it did mess with my psyche in ways I didn't even realize. I guess I'd been working on the role for about two months or a month and a half before I had a chance to go home. And I was at the airport uh, and uh, I'd been looking at the lines for the next week. And I started looking around at the people around me and sort of judging and assessing people attached to their phones or disconnected mm -hmm. from each other Not in a very like similar Jamie. way to Jamie. Yeah, and it started to freak me out a little bit. Um, so it did, you don't really realize it when you're in the thick of it, um, how deep it can go. And then thankfully Kim and I came up with this big ritual at the end of filming to kind of let go of everything. And I thought that would be kind of a clean break, but then you know, the show comes out and you're revisiting some of the material when you're watching it and, and there are these little echoes and hiccups. And I don't know, I guess if you ask for your subconscious to be involved in the character, then good or bad, whether the character is right or wrong, a, a part of you is a part of them. Mm -hmm. So it's ultimately always going to be a little bit of you as well. Yeah, yeah. Even, even the darkness, you got to tap into it a little bit. Yeah. Um, now, I did want to know, just kind of big picture, now that it's a wrapped project, do you feel like you learned something on this project? And if you could pinpoint it, what would it be? No question. I mean, just that whole using the dreams and the subconscious to influence your work and really exercises we learn to get out of your head. Um, television in particular can turn into a very cerebral game because especially if you're in most of the scenes on a show because you're constantly learning new material and having to churn it out and try to make choices quickly but to be able to get deep enough in the character where, where you still felt like you didn't have to have anything planned when you came to work mm -hmm. you knew you'd be able to work from that character and, and where they were at that given place and time. I think that was really great. And also just getting to work with great artists all around, Derek Simons, who's so collaborative, and uh, Chris Messina and Bill were both wonderful, and, and Parisa too, were wonderful actors who mm -hmm. never approach a scene in, in a contrived or linear way. There's always gonna be a sense of freedom and discovery in the moment when you're working with actors like that. And yeah. that's something that I would love if, if possible, to carry with me on, on, on jobs to come. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's always a group effort, right? It's ne yeah. never a solo endeavor. This started as a group effort. It started as a workshop with, with the cast members, us all getting to know each other and take risks in front of each other and bond. And um, so it had that sense of ensemble um, from the get-go. And I, my very first acting class was, was an Ann Bogart workshop. So mm. that kind of group mentality. And I grew up playing team sports. So anytime a project has that kind of group connection where we're all in it together, I felt the same thing on White Collar, actually. We were all in it together just trying to make the best story we can. That's always my favorite environment to be in. Yeah, certainly. Um, well, congratulations again on, on The Center. The third season was absolutely incredible. Um, before we get going here, I would be remiss not to mention the fact that we're talking in pretty extraordinary times. We're all isolating, uh, social distancing. <clears throat> how, how are you holding up? Uh, uh, we're good. Um, I say we because we're a family, my yes, husband yes. and our three children, uh, three boys who all have spring fever. So <laughs> there's that. It's like just trying to prevent it from becoming Lord of the Flies. Um, I'm kidding. We're, we're, we're great. We're, I'm so thankful to have them. You know, uh, I'm, I'm thankful to get time with them. I, I, I feel, you know, really blessed to be able to say that. But um, 
they kids keep you in the moment. And I, I think um, what I've found just from talking with people and connecting with people is that <clears throat> all the, the news cycles and the media cycles can really keep you out of the moment. And oh my gosh, what could happen? What's going to happen? This just happened here. Is it going to happen to me? Is this? And we're all in a place now where we're starting to have people who are we know and love who are directly affected by this. So mm -hmm. the more I, I find that I can just try to stay in the moment, um, the better. But as much as I try that, you know, there are times when like something comes out where I think I'm fine, then all of a sudden I drop a dish and I'm just a mess, you know? So it's like, I think we're all experiencing those kinds of things, um, but it's a great time to connect with those we love and, um, uh, I just started, uh, I'm going to do a, like some group video conferencing with friends. The kids mm -hmm. have been in school. We've been doing homeschooling. So okay, between yeah. that and keeping them engaged, you know, it's been pretty full on. I'm not going to lie. Um, but now they're technically on spring break. <laughs> <laughs> spring fever. <Yeah. laughs> with spring fever. So um, I'm going to have a little bit more time to socialize with people outside of our immediate group a bit. And we're going to do some video conferencing. And I've been trying to like, stay engaged with my artistry and things like that and uh, i actually have been doing we have an old rickety upright piano and i've been doing piano lessons that you can do online All um right. and it's just a great way to kind of give myself something to do creatively yeah um is that the first, first time practice for you the piano? Uh, it's not first because I, I, I minored in music at college, mm. but it, it was really just chords and, and learning to plunk things out. But this is kind of starting from scratch with a classical piano training. So very nice. All right. Um, it's it's definitely it, down the line. <laughs> it's an ego check. I'll tell you that much for yeah. sure. To, <laughs> to be that rudimentary at something at my age is kind of like, oh, gosh, well, wow. going back to kindergarten. Sure. No, it's it's commendable. It's commendable. Um, well, as a final question for you, then, we, of course, have a lot of your fans on the line right now. And a lot of the backstage readers out there are the working actors of the world. It's a, it's a time where a lot is up in the air. So what advice do you have to stay creatively engaged during a period when everything's kind of pushing against that? Yeah, it's tricky times. I, and I see it from all angles in the, biz, in the business. You know, people are like, what's going to happen? How's this going to affect us? How's it going to fall out? Um, I would say it's a great time to read books. If like, I'm going to start reading the Ilya Kazan's book on directing. Mm. Um, Cause that's one that's been on the back burner for me. Um, I would say it's a great time to write. If there's anything you've ever wanted to write for yourself or for someone else, or just to, as a creative exercise, it's a great time to do that. You've got all the solitude you need for the most right. part, or if you have a family like we do, you can try to carve out some time to do it. Um, or, you know, if you want to do something like piano lessons, um, there are great online companies. Um, if you've wanted to take voice lessons or, or piano lessons, who I think the piano lessons that I'm taking are, are, are actually, you know, they're not exorbitantly priced and you're getting a pretty good education for an hour a week just to keep the creative juices flowing. So, yeah. and, and you're supporting another artist who's still trying to carve out a living for themselves in a time when they can't directly interact with someone. Yeah, yeah, that's great advice. I mean, th this is the time to, um, it's a matter of fixing your mindset a little bit. It can either be a time to be isolated, both mentally and physically, or to pick up something new and find new ways to engage with the world. Um, yeah, and I find for me, I, I'm somebody who needs some kind of physical outlet every day. So I'm finding things like um, online yoga classes or mm -hmm. exercise classes really helpful for me just to try to stay centered, you know. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, slicing out 20 minutes for us this afternoon. Of course. This, this is great to catch up and congratulations again on season three of The it's, Sinner. Um, um, for those who haven't tuned into the season finale, it's uh, now debuted on USA Network as of last night, so be sure to check it out. Um, and Matt, th thanks for your time and stay healthy. Man, stay thank well. you so much. Everyone out there, I, I wish you and all those you love the best of health and safety at this time. Ben, it's always great to talk to you and thank all of you for all your support at this time. It really means a lot to me and for watching the show and going on this, this wild ride with us this season.
wild ride to say the least. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Matt. Thank you everyone right. for tuning in. Thank you. Uh, we will Thanks everybody. Next time. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. -bye.